Hello family, we hope that you're enjoying yourselves here with us on the Lit Television Network. We're interrupting the current programming in order to begin our following scheduled broadcast. Enjoy! On this edition of Kim's Universe, man, we're going to be talking about questions to help men and women become accountable. And boy, we're going to get right into it because Kim's universe is, is, is a mighty force. Uh, it's a mighty force of change. It's a mighty force for introspection. And it's a mighty force to find out and connect with your spiritual self. Uh, you know, one of the things I want to start off with is pain becomes wisdom. My dad used to call it. My dad, I, I, mean, I love that. You know, you write, write this, this down, viewers. Pain becomes wisdom. My daddy used to call it, son, you can buy this lesson, or you can listen to me, and you don't have to buy this lesson. And he also understood, he used to also say, I know, you know, some of the lessons you're going to want to buy anyway, uh, but I'm trying to save you from that pain yes. becoming wisdom. Yeah. Doc, talk to me about pain bec uh, becoming wisdom. Yeah, that's a journey, and I, I believe that no one can save us from it. It's just something that's necessary, because whenever... You know, a mother or a father tells a kid to put, not to put their hand on a stove. Mm -hmm. They're curious about it. So curiosity can kill the cat or it can build the cat, right? Mm. And I like the fact that when we were discussing, I love the reality of just being free mm. uh, to talk and discuss and really get the points across to those uh, that really are looking for help, for change, because that's what this is about. So our producer, um, I should say Ricky, had brought up, um, he tagged me on Facebook. This is real. Mm -hmm. And I like what he put down because he said accountability, or he wrote, accountability to my choices. And so when we start off with accountability to our choices, what we found is, or I found, let me say that because, again, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. is that my choice leads me into a place. And what is that place? If that place is still rendering pain, then I'm not applying accountability. I might still, I might be using blame because blame has been the way for most of our lives. You know, we, we're wonderfully um, equipped at this time to be able to get information where we can change our minds, right? But blame has been the way. And in our last show, I brought up to John mm -hmm. the devil. Mm -hmm. The devil is lived. He lived. She lived. Okay, yeah. bring it in, bring it in. Yeah. He lived, mm. and she lived. She lived through me, and she, he probably lived through some people that's in this studio. But I'm not going to call the names out. I'm just going to put it out there that no one wants to take accountability for the devil that they allow to master and rule their life. As we begin to walk with uh, wisdom, wisdom is talking to us and saying, who did it? And one day you wake up and you said, I did it. Mm -hmm. And then I begin to shout to the world, I did it. And the sin cannot use you anymore or the, the mistake. Um, I have to go into the mistake. Good. John. Good. I like that. I like the that. The sin is the way that they spoke but i like to look up words when i was studying greatly to get information into me to change my life i looked up sin and i found mistake it, it, it fit so much better because no one can really look at sin it's it, sin because it, it becomes such a big word that people feel like they can't overcome it mm -hmm. mistake now i can work with that mm -hmm. so you can work with the mistake now in accountability, I had called these, my team here, and I was discussing with them New Edition song, Boys to Me, and I heard Johnny Gill. And he was saying the answer to the question. We come here with um, a question, but some people never, ever get the answer. We talked about the problem and the solution. Now, we have men and women they grow. We have some men and women that do not grow. Mm -hmm. You know, you put yourself where uh, you fit in this um, discussion. I had to put myself somewhere when I was making mistakes. A man or a woman that is not growing will not own their mistakes. They will only 
discuss what others are doing, which means there's no growth. Mm -hmm. there, there can't be any spiritual growth. And if the devil is my excuse, then I'll always use excuses, you know, until I see that I have had this pattern of going around the mountain and I've not been making the right choice. I wake up to the pattern. I break that pattern. You can call it a cycle. We've seen the cycles in our families. Um, I brought up in the last show that God honors family. That means that that is his focus because without a family, you don't need a community. You don't need a tribe. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing to put into a tribe mm -hmm. if you ain't got no family. Mm -hmm. It can't be just men and it can't be just women. I'm like Rodney King. Why can't we all just find a way to understand how to get along, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in that, we find solutions or we do not. It reminds me of the wheat and the tares because you have some men and women that are working towards those goals and you have some that are not. But growth is seen through the work. That means that I'm accountable. I work on myself in the areas where I've fallen short. Well, t tell me this. Uh, I wrote down as you were talking about closure. Mm -hmm. What does closure mean? Because remember we were talking about, uh, before we came on, about holding a baby and, and the baby is, is, is no longer here yeah. in spirit. So, so talk to me about what closure means around being accountable so closure is a place where you find that you're not able to blame people anymore that you have to take responsibility and that means even with trauma if you had been traumatized and you're getting help to deal with that situation help to deal with that situation can bring you into mastery over the situation where it does not dictate your life anymore. And then that closure can happen to that past situation. But we go back again and you look at the past. And if you're reflecting on the past constantly, the trauma can't be healed because you are in your mind reliving it. Maybe you haven't told anybody about it. When you begin to speak up, what happens is, is that this attachment to a lived situation, which is really a devil, it can't live through you anymore because you begin to work it out. You begin to work on your mind and on your heart. And even as we go back into the last recording and we talk about Deuteronomy 5, if everyone sat down at the table and they began to look at Deuteronomy 5 and God is your source, your, your comfort, your help, um, your everything, your lawyer, your doctor. What happens is, is that you begin to depend on God to heal you, to show you the way in a trauma, mm -hmm. in a situation that keeps coming back, even in your dreams, tormenting you. And the reason why it keeps coming back is not just because it wants to torment, it's because you need to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. That psychology. The psychology of... The subconscious says that I need to clear out these thoughts that are not productive. So these thoughts that are not productive, what they do is also ruin relationships. Mm -hmm. Because you you might be in a marriage or you might be at work and no one knows until you really get deep into it, a year or two or three, that you are seeing these dreams or thinking about these things uh, that have happened to you. No one knew about it. You, you hadn't gotten any help. And what happens is, is that that mindsets begin to manifest in your life on a daily basis. You don't trust people. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of something that lived in your past. What are you going to do? You're going to learn how to break those cycles of thinking. You know, we're not just in a cycle of doing something. We do things because we're thinking first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thought is where it begins, you know? In so, the beginning was the word. So so there's a lot of people out here that are challenged with closure. Yes. They feel more comfortable holding it. Yes. Even if it's if it's if it keeps manifesting and multiplying, they just want to keep holding it 
cause holding it makes them think that I'm solving something, I'm closing. You know, uh, people don't want to release it. So, so how do you get, in your practice, how do you get people to just feel comfortable with releasing it? So they get comfortable with me. I let them know who I am and what I'm doing, right? Um, and I've had, let's, let's say I've had marriages mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with. And I say, okay, you're coming not because of your husband or wife, but for yourself. Wow. That's number one. Okay. So as we look at self, within the next three to four weeks, we start getting revelation and understanding of what's been holding the person back. And as we are looking at that, and even if they have a topic that they're coming in with, then we start with that. But I look into <laughs> what I hear that they're not saying. Mm. And as I hear what they're not saying, I begin to pull other information out so that I can get to what I hear them not saying. Is that the third eye? Yeah, it is. It's intuition. We all have it. Yes, it is. So I use that as um, a method to help people in their healing. And of course, I said if you're serious. Because mm. whenever you go for help, it's not something that says that you're crazy. It's getting a, a healing in an area that has been closed up, boxed up, that no one paid attention to. It's like the inner child saying, what about what happened? You know, again, we're not going back to the past after we start healing. We only learn from the past when we start healing. What could I do to make this different? Some things you can't make it different. You can't. What you can make different is the way that you see mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and what you can do with it, mm -hmm. which takes us to pain mm -hmm. turning into gain. And pain is turned into gain when you can leverage your pain and monetize it or give it to others. Right? So sometimes God has given us um, opportunities to be a witness to others. But we can't get the witness and then give the testimony until we realize that the journey permitted it. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, I heal myself and I close the door on all of the other things that keep me distracted from helping somebody else that has had that pain and turned it into gain. Pain is how you meet wisdom. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing uh, that I wrote down uh, as I think about Boys to Men mm -hmm. and, and, and the new edition uh, song that you talked about is, you know, good connections and bad connections. Uh, you know, wow. some people have problems identifying, they, they look at a bad connection as that's something that I, I conditioned my mind w with life experience as being normal uh so they look at a bad connection as normal so a real bad connection is a good connection to them because it's normal to them because they were raised in a home where it was bad for everybody else but it was good for them because it made them feel comfortable yeah yeah so that is a way of living so again you deal with condition if you write down condition you can say okay that's their conditions but what is mine so whatever I learned from my home environment as a child will be taken into life mm -hmm. with me until I start seeing that, oh, I don't want this part. Oh, I want this part. Oh, I'm going to release this part. Oh, I'm not going to do that part. And that's the freedom that we have in Christ because I don't really believe that we realize that we're actually our mothers and fathers, our aunts and uncles when we come into this world. So someone might say, well, I'm not going to be like yada yada. Well, you are going to be like them because you came through them. Your mm -hmm. genetics is going to align you to have the faults that they did. So the only thing that's going to work is your accountability to change that. When you watch or you, you study anything about the Kabbalah with the Jews, what you'll find is, is that they train their children they the sure same do. way. They sure do. Yeah, They, they have... Um, uh, the 13, age 13, when they become of age, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we are 25 learning 
information that 13 year old bar mitzvah young men are experiencing. So the changes that we need to make within ourselves and accountability is what we put into our seed, right? That goes back into the mother and father. For me, if, if there's no mother and father, there's inherently a father that keeps us, and that's the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is going to teach you whether your parents are there or not. Mm -hmm. This is, a, you know, Deuteronomy 5, you know, you, you don't read the Bible or whatever your religion is for your ability to just speak that word again you are speaking the words so you can transform yourself in your life you know that something is out of order even as a child you can feel it so what happens is is that you begin to stand on some words that can bring you solutions and there's no more blame there you start seeing through your prayer every day if you use Deuteronomy 5 you'll see every day something or use it every day, you'll see by 30 days what you need to change. Mm, say that again, because that sounds like that's something that's in your practice. Yeah, something you need to change. You will see, if you read Deuteronomy 5 for 30 days, you will see something that you needed to change. Wow. It's 30 days to break a habit. No, 15 at least, but 30 to really, you Crack know, it. profoundly, uh, yeah, tackle it. Wow, wow. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is men lead. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, going to be uh, touchy for women. Um, I believe that it's um, a, a relationship that you can trust a man in, right? Right. And right. so um, right. we, you know, help me to get to the place where women can understand that I, I lived the alpha female life because I was, um, I grew up with women. And they had been hurt by men. But it, it, even in that hurt, if I didn't see that that hurt needed to be healed or God hadn't ushered me into that place, then I would be the same alpha uh, female, right? Who wants to carry the, the burden of, you know, raising children by themselves? And don't misunderstand when I say burden. It's not the children, but raising them by yourself when you didn't, uh, you didn't get pregnant on your mm -hmm. own, yeah? And this is not their fault, but we have a come to Jesus time that's needed. Mm -hmm. Because men have the responsibility of being the head of the household. Your helpmate is your wife. And so your wife is someone that you respect and she respects you. I'm, I want to make this equal because mm -hmm. I'm not that mm -hmm. woman that I was when I grew up. See, all of that I had to go through a breaking of. And what I found is, even I have a book, Dance With Your Partner, Not Their Confusion. So when you start waking up and you're saying, okay, I can't dance with the confusion anymore, mm -hmm. then you're responsible to take your life into another level. I'm not saying that people need to divorce. I'm saying that there's another level of teaching that husband and wives need to look mm -hmm. at. And also going back to the covenant, commitment. What did you commit? Why did you get married? The, the commitment. Right. And it, then we have a lot of people that are having children um, and the covenant is not there. So we have so much going on. Um, I could go on and on, but the men taking responsibility and even coming into communities, men that are leaders, we need that again. Uh, leaders that are showing young men the way because some of them don't get it at home, you yep. know. Yep. Um, I wrote on Facebook the other day and I put messages out there not for shine or glory, but compelling because if you are a Christian, you, you family is what God loves. All of this separation is not God. Mm -hmm. That is some past stuff that was lived. You can work through it. Listen, pain, you got to work through the pain to make situations work. Now, if it's ongoing, you need an interpreter, a mediator uh, of counseling to see if you can work that out. And that's in anything. But when your interpreters or mediators are not working, then you can look at other solutions. I think that even in moral compassing and standing, divorce has become overrated, right? Because he didn't say what I wanted him to say. She didn't cook the way that I wanted her to cook. Oh, I did this because of that. But what about the children? Mm -hmm. 
now. You may not have any children. So that'll be wonderful because if you're in a relationship that's going south, you can bring it north. But there's ego there that needs to be brought into humility so that we can listen to each other. So that we can hear. You know, you have conversations that are combative in marriages. But where's the Christian that I want to know, right? Because I blamed the devil because I was arguing. Did I hear myself? Mm -hmm. Did I hear that it was coming out of me? Uh, I need to get my devil under control. Uh, is that conversation and the argument out of control because it's really pushing up something from my past? Mm -hmm. So you have all different ways to look at um, the issues that men and women have in a society, women not wanting a man to tell them what to do. Let me tell you something. This is historical because women's lib came up back in suffrage time. And um, that right there is not the truth. Listen, you got men and women up until the 50s. Our men and women, black men and women, they were raising their families uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have all of this materialism before them. Mm -hmm. But as materialism, and I need this and I want that, that became a problem for the families. They didn't see that it was a vice to keep them separated because who's going to go and buy Nikes when they can't afford to? You know, we keep coming back to different things that have to do with materialism. Someone would say, oh, my wife wasn't making enough money, so, you know, she spent too much, so I divorced her. Okay, uh, vice versa. The thing about this is, is that, is that really a reason to get a divorce if you can learn better? Mm-hmm, mm hmm Learn. She needs discipline. And he needs discipline, however that went. Maybe, you know, the wife or the husband didn't have enough status. You knew who she was and who he was before you married him. That part. That part right there. <laughs> yeah, put a, put, a, put a pin right there. Uh, yeah, I, I really want to get back to dance with your partner, not with your partner's confusion. Yeah. Uh, because I think a, a, a lot of people are dealing with that. They don't put it in those terms, but that's what they're dealing with. Your confusion is not always the partner's confusion, right? But when you wake up and you realize you've been dealing with the partner's confusion, then uh, it's time again to do something different, mm -hmm. right? You can't make anybody be what you want them to be. You can only change you. Say that again, because a lot of, lot of women, yeah, they want to, they want to, they want to change the man. Right. Crack, crack. Yeah, they want yeah. to change the man. They'll but... even pay for their living now, right? Yeah. So, yeah, no, you can't make someone be what you want them to be. They have to change on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a woman that, the word is, enables um, a man, will become, she will become despised by that man. Mm. Because men have an inherent ability to hunt and to take care of themselves. If you debilitate that, mm. There's an anger. innate healing, I mean, hate or anger that will come up in them. And you won't know where it's coming from. Well, I did everything that I could, but you didn't do wow. what you shouldn't have done. You should wow. have let him be a man. Say that. Say that. I mean, that, that, I don't understand. I, I, people he didn't get that. Shy. Just, just t say that one more time yeah. about, about, say that, man, that, that, that touched me right there. Say that again. Yeah, she didn't let him become a man. Mm. She enabled him. This is not your child, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we're treating men like they're our children by taking care of them. You were never meant to take care of him. You know, for those out there that are taking care of men, he is, he was called into the head. That means he's a protector. Nature has put him in a position of protecting. So this is where the problem is. And, you know, there's women that might get upset, but truth hurts. You know, I had to go through that same brokenness to find what I'm saying to you. So a man, on the other hand, that is not going out to hunt for food and provisions is not in order for his wife and family. Mm. He's not doing his part. So when they change the roles and they truly become man, I'm committed, woman, I'm committed to what? Learning how to be a wife and a husband. That's right. Then what happens is 
Nothing can break that bond. No weapon formed against it can prosper because they become a team now and they're working together. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You can't take care of a man, lady. Man is made to take care of you and you accentuate that part, the nurturing of the home, the nurturing of the family. I'm not saying that she's not supposed to work. Oh, you got but his right. part of nature is what he is. Mm -hmm. His her part of nurture is what she does, and mm -hmm. some women don't have the nurturing part down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they love being the boss. That's cool, but it's a it's a heavy weight when you have to do it by yourself because of what you learned coming up through the family. When you see nothing but women being um, or that alpha energy, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes heavy. You know, and then you're crying. Where is the man for me? You may not have seen the man because of your personality, the identity of um, how you think it should be, and that submission that you want the man to come and bring you when you really need to change that um, alpha energy. It needs balancing, right? And that's my opinion mm -hmm. because if you demise a man, you will run him away. Mm. And it's the same for a man. In his dealings with his wife and family, if he is not giving 100% at home or he hasn't lost the idea that everyone else matters, but his family doesn't matter. I said it that way for a reason mm -hmm. because there's a lot of men that their friends and family mean more than their family mm -hmm. does. Your wife mm -hmm. you were supposed to cleave to when you left home. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, the thing here. Yeah, man, that's, that's some powerful, uh, powerful things. We got uh, about a minute and a half left. Uh, the, the, the thing I want to close on is self-development mm -hmm. and, uh, and forgive uh, yourself and move on. Uh, so, so, like I said, we got like a minute and 15. Now, uh, talk quickly about self development. Self development is when you're using the word to transform your behavior, and your behavior becomes the uh, product of development. You start seeing the growth in who you are. Mm. No more um, taking care of someone, or uh, it's a half hearted relationship. Uh, relationship that you're putting in your work in the relationship by t working on yourself you know the, the the thing that i want to close on is we're here at, on kim's universe on the lit tv network and we're talking about real issues we're yeah. not talking about pie in the sky things mm -hmm. uh, if if someone wants to contact you how do they do that they can call me at 708-980-8752 or um, you can go to my website, www.kimwarnersworld.com. Man, you are great. Oh, go on my profile on Facebook, Kim Warner, and you'll find some things there. And also donate to um, the charity cause that we have going on. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. My name is Kim Warner and I just want to invite you guys to go on my Facebook page and look at the fundraiser that we're doing. We're raising money to assist families and children that are in need. We bless you. This is from Kim's Universe. Blessings. See you next week.